Hi and welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. Uh, happy Christmas everyone. I am doing a quick video in answer to a question. Do you use a light meter? And if so, what and how often, blah, blah, blah. So, the answer is yes, I do use a light meter. How often? Not very often at all. And what have you got? And in a way, I'm sort of embarrassed to show you. In, in other ways, I think, oh, no, actually, it's a, this is a lovely little thing. This is a Gosson 6 tree. Now, Gosson do lots of different light meters. They do modern ones, they do old ones. There tends to often be a 6 in the title, the 60s, 6 tree, and Sixtons, and all sorts of weird, wonderful things. And this is, I like it because it's just a nice thing. <clears throat> It's not greatly useful because it only goes up to one five hundredth of a second, so you're you're fairly limited. But it does work and it does do a job. And I just like the way it works and the way it feels. So you've got this door, and in this door there's a section that's got slats in, so you can do reflected and refracted. Is that the right word? Or I call it reflected and ambient light. So you can open the door all the way, just slide it around like a shutter, go all the way down until it clicks in, you point that at your subject and that will do reflected light. If you don't want reflected light, if you just want the ambient light reading, you put it round until this lines up with these little red marks to there. That puts this sort of slatted bit over that and then that will give you an ambient light reading. So you can just hold it up like that and that will give you an ambient light. Now this was designed for cameras with this funny scale, which is just like a number, so you, it ends up giving you a number, but it does also tell you what f-stop and shutter speed you would need for the available light. So with this little doofer on the side, you dial in your ASA or ISO, if you're a Nikon user, so I'm going to dial in 1600 ISO, which is the maximum it goes up, and obviously that's a limiting factor on, the, on this type of thing and that will give you a light reading and it is telling me that it's number 10. If I do that, it goes down, so number 10. So here there's another little dial and you go to number 10 and you put number 10 in the little window at the top there and then off your scale you can read the settings. So it's saying that at 30th of a second I would need to take a picture at f5.6. So let's just, ooh, frosty, let's just try that. So f5.6 at 30th of a second should give me correct exposure. It's not easy to see on my little screen on my D100, but if you want to look at the video on the D100, that's around here somewhere. So I'm just going to take a picture of the camera that I'm using. Have a look on screen. Let's just zoom in on it. How do you do that on this? Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's exposed fine. Absolutely fine. Nice natural looking exposure. So, that, you know, it works <coughs> for what I need. Now let's just do a do a reflected light meet reading so I'm just going to point it at the thing yes it, it, because the lights very um, balanced in here because it's it's obviously diffused because it's a cloudy day it's diffused through the roof of my conservatory it's giving exactly the same setting which you'd expect obviously if you was on a sunny day and you had a you know it was brightly lit subject and you you'd, you'd use the reflected on a day like this you can use the ambient light is that the right word I don't know but anyway so that is the um, the light meter I use. Also, this is a nice little touch. On the side, you open this little door and you have to push and slide it and it opens up a little door and it gives you a colour temperature chart. Very basic. It's got A, B, C and D and that relates to some information on the back about filters and also in the instructions. And you basically match the colour that looks most like the colour on the side. Now today, for instance, out here, the, the, the colour of the square matches the side and it's the one that says B. So what that's saying is the light at the moment has got quite a bit of red in it and as you go down you get like more blue in the light. So you've got red and blue in the light and it just gives you an indication of, of where you are and you can use that to um, set your white balance or use different filters 
and it tells you on the back which filter relates to that sort of colour. Um, so, you know, as a little package, absolutely brilliant. This cost me a whopping, an absolute fortune. I bought it off of eBay, second hand, it come with the box, with the instructions, with the original lanyard, with the thing stuck on, which apparently on these often comes off, for the massive amount of £1.20 plus £2.40, twice the amount in postage and packaging. So there you go, for less than a fiver, what a great little thing to have in your bag. I don't use it very often. Obviously my camera goes to one four thousandth or eight thousandth of a second, ISO 25,600. This goes to one five hundredth of a second and ISO 1600. But is it useful? Yes. And it absolutely cheap as chips. So there you go, that's my answer on light meters. Anyway, thanks for that. This has been GRBO TV. Cheers, bye.